It's hard out there for a male Tungara frog. If he makes his best mating call, a short whine with a clicking chuck or two, he becomes more attractive to the females with whom he'd like to mate. He also becomes a better target for the bats that share the ecosystems where the frogs live. For the frog, this is just life in the rainforest with all its risks and rewards, choices and consequences. For biologists, however, it's a rather dramatic example of sexual selection, which is one of the more fascinating catch-22s of evolution. What females want, and how males evolve in response to that, isn't always what's going to make the males most likely to survive. Darwin suggested this in the origin of species, and also later in the 1870s on his book on sexual selection. And he was, he was immediately ridiculed by lots of his very closest colleagues, saying that, you know, there's no evidence at all that females have this kind of input into the mating decision. That's Mike Ryan, a professor at the University of Texas at Austin. Since the late 1970s, Ryan has been studying Tungara frogs to better understand this process that so confounded Darwin and his contemporaries. Unlike natural selection, which rewards traits like strength or intelligence, that make a male more likely to survive long enough to pass his genes on to the next generation, sexual selection simply rewards males for being good-looking, or, in the case of the Tungura frogs, good-sounding. <laughs> 